Hey guys, Ross from Pilot Hobbies here, and I got a pretty cool new project. It's based off my old Pilot Track design, except these things are really freaking cool. So this one I've got set up to use just a standard RC radio, but this one's using a microcontroller and ESP32, which are an amazing little package that you can get on Amazon for under 10 bucks. It uses the Arduino IDE, which I actually just got started with this week, but this could be a great beginner project if you're looking to get into something with the Arduino IDE. So our first step is going to be putting the servos in the chassis. Our cab doubles as the lid for the servos, so all we have to do is put it around the uh, lip on the front there, and you should just be able to snap that on, and it should click into place underneath the chassis. Our cab also accommodates two 5mm LEDs. These I just have powered by a standard servo lead with a resistor to limit the current. Now at this point, if you're using a receiver-based build, such as using like a Spectrum DSMX compatible receiver like I'm using, you can uh, plug your servos directly into the receiver. And because I'm using Elevon mixing, I can just put the left servo in the aileron channel and the right servo in the elevator channel. If you're using a receiver that's only compatible with 5 volts, you'll probably want to use a voltage regulator between the battery and the receiver to step down the voltage to 5 volts. We do have our proper mixing working. We basically have all of our wiring complete for our receiver-based scout. At all the idler wheels. These are going to use an M4 by 20 millimeter screw and I'm using just a couple little washers on there to space it out from the chassis a bit. I also recommend using just a dab of plastic safe grease inside the wheel. I recommend printing these at a very slow speed. They actually are designed with the proper spline for an SG90 servo so they should just pop on without needing any sort of adapter or glue. Now don't over tighten them obviously, but you'll want to make sure that they're tight enough. All we gotta do is slip these tracks on. Now these are just printed in TPU, and you should watch, they do have a direction to them. They should kind of scoop forward. I should be able to just get this over most of these idlers, and there we go. Now if you had an FPV camera, you could just slide it right in there. Otherwise, we're going to take our doors, and these should just slip on and snap down on them. Now one nice thing to note about this is I'm actually using the Tower Pro 360 degree high voltage servos. They're pre-modified to be continuous rotation without having to do any, anything else special to them. And when I fired them up with my transmitter, they just worked. They actually have a dead zone at the middle and they go all the way up to 100% endpoints. So not only are we going to show how to use a standard RC receiver to make one of these work, but we're also going to be using this ESP32. Now I've been working for a while on an Arduino sketch for this and these things are great because they're cheap little modules and it's got a built-in camera and we can control them over Wi-Fi using any smartphone, tablet, or laptop which really reduces the barrier to entry to make one of these and uh, it makes it a lot more convenient to just carry one of these around with you and use it anywhere. And this one I'm doing slight bit different. This one I've actually got onboard charging capability because I've just got our battery charger and then in parallel with that battery charger I've got my leads for my battery here. And then on the negative terminal, I have it interrupted through the switch to go to the voltage booster. Now this voltage booster, I'm gonna get this wired up to the servos so it's got a little bit of a load on it. And then after that, we're gonna use this little dial on here to adjust our voltage because this is an adjustable regulator and we wanna get it to about five volts. 
Now, as you may be able to see, I actually split these signals from the servo apart from the power wires because I'm actually separately running these power wires directly to our voltage booster and then our signal wires are going to have to go up to the cab. I think we're getting there here. See as I'm down this up. Now we're going to prep our ESP32 cam to be flashed. Now in order to flash this we're going to have to have an FTDI adapter and a couple jumper wires. Our ground pin and this I.O. pin, and we're going to have to jumper that to put this into flashing mode. From there, we'll take our R.X. pin from this FTDI and put it to the T.X. pin on the ESP32. Conversely, we're going to take the T.X. pin from here and put it on the R.X. pin on here. Now we just need power, so we're going to hook up our ground pin, and then finally our VCC. You'll have to go to arduino.cc, go to software, and downloads. From there, you should be able to download the Arduino IDE for whichever OS that you're using. And we'll have to make a couple changes. First, we'll go to File, Preferences, and under this Additional Boards Manager, we'll need to add this URL in order to get the proper libraries for our ESP32. I will have this in a link. So once we have our additional boards installed, we'll have to go to Tools, Board, and Boards Manager. We'll want to make sure we have ESP32 by Espressive Systems, and for this we're going to use version 1.0.2. Once we have our additional boards installed, we'll have to go to Tools, select our board as ESP32 W Rover Module, and our standard upload speeds and flash speeds should be fine, but we'll need to select the partition scheme of Huge App. So here I have my Pilot Hobby Scout 32 project in a zip folder. We're just going to extract that. And if I go into the Scout 32 folder, we should have the Scout32.ino. So before we flash our Scout 32, we can make a couple configuration changes. By default, it's set up to be its own access point, so you should just be able to go to your phone or computer and select the SSID to connect to it. However, if you want it to connect to your router instead, you can change AP to zero and enter your own SSID and password. Under App Server, we have a couple other variables up here. The only one you should need to change is the endpoint. If you find that your servos are running too slowly or your control isn't as granular as you'd like, you can change the endpoints. I found that a value of 60 works for modified SG90 servos, while a value of about 220 works for the pre-modified Tower Pro 360 high voltage servos. Right here I'm opening the serial monitor to see if we can see anything from the SP32. I'm just going to remove power and plug it back in. But we're not getting anything from the serial monitor. This does happen in a few people's cases. So in this case we're going to actually take our power pin and move it over to 5 volts. We're also going to take our FTDI and update this to the 5 volt setting. This should give us a little bit more current, and now we're getting something in the serial monitor. Only use the 5 volt setting on the 5 volt pin or else you risk frying the ESP32. At this point I'm just going to click upload, and it will start flashing. So if the flash was successful, you should get a message of it being 100%, and it should say hash of data verified to confirm that everything was written correctly. So after removing our header pin, we should be able to reset this and open up our serial monitor, and we should see this attempt to boot up with our new code. In this case, we're getting camera not detected, but everything else seems to be working correctly. We got our ESP32 all flashed and ready to go. I think it's time to start buttoning things up here. Then we're going to chase our power wires and our servo wires through the back of here. Now in order to attach our LEDs to our ESP32 cam, we're actually going to have to modify this by removing the stock LED because we're just going to wire onto those pads because it already has a built-in transistor. So in order to do this, I'm actually just going to heat up this LED. clean off 
those pads a little bit. And there we go, now we have two solder pads to solder to. We go power, ground, left servo, right servo. Now the way I have this cab designed is I can actually just take this from the side here and we'll just slide that into a slot. So yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Um, we're going to want to attach the camera. So now we got to get all the wheels on. Everything's together. This is my first time actually trying this thing fully assembled. I've tested the code bit by bit, like on the bench, but I've never actually had it fully working. And we wait for flashing lights flashes. That means the web server should now be up. We see Scout 32 and I'm now connected. So I'm now going to go to my web app and hey, here's our web page. I'm going to hit start stream. And holy cow, so it should forward, right, forward, stop. Oh, that is too cool. You guys, I literally just learned how to use the Arduino IDE like this week. This is freaking phenomenal. I've got all the code for this available. I tried to document it as well as I could because I do have a little bit of programming knowledge and I did use a couple libraries, but there is some like wonky stuff that's written by me in there. If you're an expert programmer and you see it and you throw up, I am so sorry, but this is like literally my first Arduino sketch and it worked. So I am more than happy about that and I, Really hope you guys can download this and have just as much fun as I just did with this. Oh, let's test out the lights on it. Got the flashlight, and yeah, that works perfectly. And we should be able to adjust the brightness on the fly here. So if I just wanted them for show without really wasting a lot of battery. But there's like a resolution slider, so we can go into like super chunk mode if we have like really bad Wi-Fi. And we've got a quality mode, which um, obviously changes like the JPEG encoding but holy cow, you guys, terrific project. I am more than thrilled about this. Um, I'll probably make like rolling, running changes to the design. Um, so I'm sure I'll make improvements to this in the future. Um, and I will have everything freely downloadable on my website, uh, pilothobbies.com. You should see links there on the homepage if this is fairly recent. And I will have links to basically anything I used in here. So if you want to make this exact same thing, well, gosh darn it, you sure as hell can. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this video because uh, everything went well. And I hope everything goes well for you too if you do a build because this is what the hobby's all about, having fun. So have a good one.